Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a sound using Spire. It's these kinds of sounds I'm asked to make a lot actually. Um, and it's sort of this vinyl sort of wow, like vinyl pitch variation is what we're gonna sort of look at like emulating today a little bit. And let me real quick just play for you an example. So the pitch is there, but there's this slight variation and it creates this like um, ambience, this atmosphere that is a thing a lot of people sort of want. And let me really quick show you in sort of the context of a small loop. And I'll go through some different waveforms because it's actually really versatile since the technique I'm going to show you doesn't necessarily rely on the waveform. It relies on a, a moving of the waveform. So let's uh, let's hear it. So pretty cool. Now, if you don't like the small, the subtle distortions that I have in there, you can take the shaper off. I personally like it. And so I left it in there. Let's go ahead. Let me show you the techniques. Pretty straightforward one. So first, let me show you the general principle at hand. So we're going to go to the initialize preset. And I'm going to draw your attention to the oscillator. And we're going to move the wavetable up so we can see the waveform. Um, and because if you do this with it as a as a saw wave, you won't really see what I'm talking about. Because we move Control B, it looks like it's sitting still. But we're gonna go all the way to a sine wave because it's also very easy to hear as a sine wave. And if I move Control B, we see that it actually shifts the waveform back and forth. This moving of a waveform back and forth in time is equivalent to a pitch variation, and that's actually how we'll accomplish the effect we want. So if I play this, you can see it moving back and forth. That is the pitch variation that we would like to have. Now I'm going to use envelope one to do this. And what it's going to do is when envelope one turns on and off, it's going to move this knob back and forth. And that's because it happens pretty fast. We're going to get the shifting, which will equate to a pitch variation and doing the pitch variation this way is kind of important because if you were to just automate the pitch, um, you would have to do very small um, pitch automation. And if there are harmonics in the sound, this can get trickier. And so I find this to be one of the more straightforward methods is to just do this is called a phase shift when we move the waveform back and forth like this. So by just moving it back and forth, it's easier in my opinion, just because it's, it's a much smaller scale shift. So what we're going to do is we're going to use envelope one, but envelope one also controls the volume. So we'll also make it a pluck at the same time. And this is good because we only want this variation sort of one time and it's going to draw it out over the length of the whole note. And so I find this to be sort of a good combination. If you wanted to do it with a saw, with a sound that's going to sustain, you could try and do it with an LFO and maybe modulate the LFO with an envelope, but it's a little trickier. So I find this to be just a tad simpler. So first things first, let's hook it up. It's by default already connected to the volume. So for example, if I play a note, it comes out, but if I turn the sustain off, it's gone. Just to show you that it is connected to the volume, even though it's not sort of shown. And let's go in to our area here. It doesn't have a label, but basically this is what we're targeting to control with our envelope. And we're gonna go to oscillator one, control B, since that has the phase shift. And we need to be in the classic mode also. So here we are, we're in the classic mode. We've got this set up. And now we use the amount to say that this, this is like saying how much movement should the envelope be allowed to tell this to move so that when this turns on this basically says how much it's allowed to turn this so hopefully that's pretty straightforward so now when we play it we're going to get that shift but we want it to go up and down so i'm going to introduce a decay and in order for it to come back down we need to decay back down and that's why i'm going to bring the sustain down 
So now we have an attack that's that's going to push the knob up and then a decay, which is going to pull the knob back down to whatever our sustain is. Since we're writing a pluck sound, our sustain is zero. So it equates to an up and a down motion, which is what we're after. And let's make our attack up a bit. Now, just to sort of show you, we can also move this down a bit. This changes where the up and down shifting will occur. And in sounds and waveforms with more harmonics, this can become a useful tool to have. In some, in some cases, it doesn't really matter, but it's definitely something to be worth considering where you set this is gonna change sort of the quality of the note. And what I mean by quality is not like good or bad quality, just like how it sounds. It's gonna change how it sounds. So I'm going to go with this for right now. And if I go to amount zero and just play a couple notes so you can hear it, that's what we have. Now I'm going to add in this subtle pitch variation. And we get that little, whoa, whoa, like, a, ew. like there's something slightly unsettling about it, but we still settle on a pitch. And so this creates that vibe that a lot of people are after. We're going to enhance it a bit. We're going to go into the reverb and add just a touch of reverb. And, oh, that's really nice, actually. And now let's go in. We're going to move uh, a delay in. A little bit of chorus. I messed around with some phaser stuff, and I know uh, this is sort of a personal taste, or it's a more personal taste than what I think the other effects are. Uh, some people like phasers on their stuff. Uh, definitely worth considering. And then finally on the shaper, I'm going to go to soft since I don't want to push it too hard and just mix this in a touch. Bring the drive up a bit. Really, really nice sound with the sine wave. Now, let's get rid of it just so I can show you. I think it'll be a little more obvious here. So if I play a note, see how pure that is? It's very, very different. And if I bring this up, this sort of uh, brings it out a bit more. Now let's go to a waveform. You know, it's got a little bit more going on. I used guitar too in the original example. And now here we've got high harmonic stuff. And I find that if you want to sound synthy, uh, that's fine. But a lot of times people don't want that. So I'm going to bring in a perfecto filter and just, or per, yeah, perfecto, and just bring the cutoff up a bit. Maybe back down. And then where you select it, it's going to change it. Now, I heard the sine wave first, so I'm kind of drawn to that sound. But we can go in, like, for example, oboe could be pretty cool. And now, when you're looking at waveforms, there's like a, a quick tip. Waveforms that are more smooth like this, like long smooth lines, there's not like little stuff going on. That means that the way, the frequencies of that sound are generally lower. And if you see like little little motions, like on that guitar sound, um, if we went uh, back to something like this, all these little jaggedy edges are higher harmonics, which is what we had to filter out. But the oboe will not have, it will have higher harmonics, but they're not quite the same. Like the content's very different. There's a lot more stuff in the low, the mid to low register than if so, in something that has these little variations. So just when you look at waveforms, you can sort of take that away when you're looking at them. And you see how bunched up they are? Cool, let's, uh, let's do a thing where we actually take, let's take uh, the MIDI information, let's paste it in our own and put it up here. Whoops, didn't want to click that. Let's try out another waveform. You know, on the on the looking at waveforms note too, that's also why when you see this happen, um, it becomes more more smooth. Like if I have it like this. And then versus this, 
sounds more like a sine wave. The reason is uh, a line actually takes a very specific order of harmonics. So when you see a waveform begin to level out like this, uh, it's an indication of a particular pattern of harmonics. And when you bring it up like this, this is superimposing a, a big wave. You see how there's like this imprint of a larger wave. So there's a, a fundamental frequency, a lower frequency that has a much bigger impact on this on the waveform than the others do. Like these other frequencies are much softer because they're riding on this big one. And so just some other things to look for, look at too. Uh, whenever you see like straight lines, anytime you see like just a jagged line or just a, a flat line, any kind of a line, uh, that is gonna be higher harmonic content as well. So not necessarily small stuff. Also look out for like lines, it's more evidence. That's like why saw waves and square waves have uh, very bright sounds, why the, why the sine wave doesn't have such a bright sound because it's just a, a pure frequency. But that in a nutshell is how you make this sound. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe, hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day. Yeah.